Life Church. This is Eli Blevins, and I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into our online service today. We are so thankful that we are part of your day. But hey, we're getting ready to go into a time of praise and worship, and so we want to move you from being a spectator to a participator in worship. So if you can, go ahead and get yourself ready for worship. It's going to be an amazing Sunday.
precious Jesus. How many of us here this morning have a story? How many of us here have a place that we came from that maybe isn't such a great place? How many of us here have faith in a God who redeems the broken? How many of us here have faith in a God that heals the sick? How many of us have faith in a God that takes what was torn apart by the enemy, what was torn apart by darkness, and he takes it and he mends it. He puts it back together and then reveals it proudly in his light. I just want to encourage you this morning, wherever you came from, whatever story you have behind you, no matter how dark it is this morning, in the presence of God, your destiny and your future is light. Your destiny and your future is freedom. Your destiny and your future is the love, the unconditional love that we find in our Father. So this morning, I want to declare over you that you are free. I don't care how rough your ride to church was this morning or what you went through this past week. I don't know, maybe you yelled at your kids this morning. I don't know. But right now, right here in his presence, he makes all things new. He makes all things new. And when we come to him, we are free. So this morning, you are free. You are free to love and be loved. You are free to worship in this place. You are not a hypocrite because you were fallen five hours ago when you're worshiping now. You are a son and you are a daughter of God. He loves you. So let's lift our hearts in this, in this course. Sing hallelujah. Let's praise the one that set us free. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living. Come on, let's sing that again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me.
my blessed Redeemer, my answer, my saving grace. Beyond my hope in the shadows, my strength in the battles, my anchor for all my days. And you stand by my side and you stood in my place, Jesus, no one. Life Church. This is Nicole Roberts, and I'm the children's director here at Life. And I just want to take a moment and let's just get together and pray together about the things that are on your heart. Um, I was thinking about this phrase this week. This phrase that says, "That's just the way it is." Well, that's just that's just the way it is. It's a phrase that we use in context with something that we're trying to accept or something that we don't understand. That's just the way it is. But what if? What if we paired that phrase? That's just the way it is with what God says. What if when he says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, then I will give you rest. That's, <laughs> that's just the way it is. Or what if when his word says that no weapon formed against me is gonna be able to prosper, that we accept that's just the way it is. When he said he is a very present help in the time of your trouble, that that's, that's just the way it is. When there is nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, that that's just the way it is. That he is our provider, our refuge, our strength, our source, our defender, our warrior, our very best friend. That we would accept that is that's just the way it is. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way, the truth and the life. And the way in Greek, you want to know what that means? The way. It means the road, and it also means the process. So not only is he the road to get you where you need to be, but he is the process to get there. And our prayer, our prayer is not a reminder to God of what he needs to do for us, but prayer is a reminder to us of what God can do. And that's, that's, that's just the way it is. So what, what can God do for you this morning what are the things that are, that are on your heart? Because he cares about every one of them, every one of them. His word tells us that he perfects all that concerns us. All is everything. So from the little to the grand, he is concerned about everything that concerns you. So let's come together in prayer. Are you ready? Let's do it. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much that you are indeed all the things that your word says you are. And that's just the way it is. 
So I come to you right now, Lord, with every need that is on my heart, whether it is for relationships, whether it is for healing, whether it is for provision. God, that your word tells us that you provide for all of our needs according to your riches, and that cannot be measured. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can stand on your word, and that's just the way it is, whether we feel it, whether we can see it or not. It's just the way it is. Thank you, God, that you are moving in my situation and that you've got it. That's just the way it is. In Jesus' name, amen. Another thing we want to do this morning is we want to lift up another church. We want to lift up the refinery today. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just lift up the refinery. We lift up, Lord, everything that they are doing over there. We pray, God, that you are moving mightily in their hearts today, God, and that this will be a day when they will be able to look back and say, wow, look what the Lord is doing, not only in their church, but in the planet, on the earth, in Jesus' name. And we lift up Life Church. Oh, yes, we do. We thank you, Lord, that you live up to your name here at Life. And we pray, God, that you would just give revelation to your people, that you would release every resource. And, God, that you would show yourself mighty in your people, in this city, in this place, at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Hey, I just want to encourage you with your offering and your giving. First of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for giving and being so generous with your gifts. God is so good. He is so good. And his word tells us in Proverbs eleven twenty five. 25, it says, A generous person will prosper, and whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Well, I don't need to tell you that that's just, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. And there are two easy ways for you to give to Life Church. And the first way is online at lifecc.com or on our Life app. And if you don't mind, I would just like to take a moment just to pray over those tithes and offerings. So dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much, God, that you have so blessed us and that, God, you choose to use us to bless others. So I just pray, God, that you would make every provision for every person under the sound of my voice, and, God, that you would use um, all these resources for your kingdom to do mighty, mighty work. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church. Hey church, we just had an amazing time of praise and worship. But hey, before we continue into our Vision Sunday, I want to remind you guys of a couple quick announcements that we have. Our first one is that this Saturday, we are doing our City Serve. And that's an incredible opportunity for us as a church to gather together and to go serve our community. So if you want to, please go to lifecc.com and you can see all the details on there. Also, our men's event is happening on March 20th. We've got a chili and wings and dessert to cook off. It is going to be a fantastic time. I cannot wait to go. But if you want to participate in this event by entering in one of your wings, chili, or dessert, please head to lifecc.com and get yourself registered. Next week, we have an incredible opportunity together as a church to do communion. So at this time, before next week, go ahead and get yourself your communion supplies. Get some bread and some grape juice, and that way we can take communion together. I believe there's so much power when we do this together in unity. But hey, we're looking ahead there. But now we're going to take a few moments and take a look back at what God has been doing in our church for the past couple weeks in a video. Sunday to let you know a little bit about our serve groups um, and a couple of them that I serve with. I currently serve with our safety team and with our setup team in the mornings. Um, if any of you have ever considered or thought about or even haven't considered um, 
any part of serving or what it might be like. Just wanted to let you know that this has been an incredible part of my life. Never thought about it before until a friend of mine six years ago brought it to me uh, about doing such and uh, never thought about serving or volunteering and uh, it has made such an incredible difference not just in my Sundays, but in my daily life. Um, the people that I've met, that, that, that I serve with, that help out with, and people like, you know, people that have never served before that just come in the doors that I might greet with a hello or that might greet me. Um, yeah, it, it can take, uh, it, it can take a bad week that I've had, regardless of what's going on in my life. And Sunday mornings will turn it around and it will, it, it makes just such an incredible difference in rest of my week. Um, so if volunteering is something that you've never considered, uh, serving is something that you've never considered, I encourage you to consider it. If it's something that you have been interested in the past, uh, please check us out. Please check out our serve groups um, and volunteering on uh, the church's website, uh, lifecc.com. Hope you have a great Sunday. Hey, good morning, church. Welcome back to Church Online. I'm so glad you're with us. And I'm so glad to be here because last week I was in my season of COVID, but I'm praising God that I'm healthy now and I feel better after having my turn at COVID. I'm happy to be here with you in church today. But last week was not bad at all. As a matter of fact, I did worship at home just like many of you are doing in and honestly, I was so impressed with our online service. I loved it. I was like, we're doing a good job with our online church. And how about that great message from Lachlan Holmes last week? It was amazing. So I was impressed with the whole experience, and I kind of fell in love with online church with you. And so I'm just glad to be here, though, in person or online. But I'm here in person, but you're online. I'm glad to be here with you. And so, hey, I want to take a moment and just reflect on the video that you watched that Eli set up the video for us uh, about some of the things that were happening in the past month. And I'm so excited to see things like Sisterhood is meeting again since they couldn't meet through season of COVID and they're kicked back off again. And I want to give a huge shout out to, to Billy Kilduff in the videos. Man, I love that man. He's amazing. He leads our setup teams on Sunday. I would call him a world-class volunteer. He's amazing. Every Sunday he comes to church. He helps set up with so many other people. And let me just, while I'm bragging on Billy, just brag on so many people that are part of our setup team, part of our tech teams, and they're part of our worship teams and our host teams and our children's teams. We have so many amazing volunteers, and it's just such a blessing to be a part of a church that has people with that kind of heart to serve and just be amazing. Uh, speaking of Billy, though, a few weeks ago, I mentioned to him right before service, I said, Billy, I said, the, the stage decks are squeaky. And I'm like, every time I walk around, they're just squeaking. And, and he said, Pastor, he said, I'm on it. And he disappeared and came back and he had some little tool and he tightened up all the connections on the deck. And, and then he left and said something kind of funny about how I won't be squeaking in my sermon this week. So, but listen, I just love his heart. I love the heart of our serve teams. And so on behalf of all of our staff and, and the people that come to church and, and experience the, the serving gift that you give, I just want to say thank you to everybody that serves. Uh, you're amazing. We appreciate you. We couldn't and wouldn't want to do church without you. So we love our serve teams. So let me keep looking forward for just a moment. I want to remind you that Easter is coming did you know that Easter is less than a month away? We're almost there, and I'm looking forward to Easter. We, as a staff, are anticipating, though, a huge turnout for Easter this year. Therefore, we're making some additional preparations for this day. We believe it's going to be huge. Some of the things we're doing is we're adding another service. So we're going to have a service on an extra service, a third service on Easter. So on the screen, you can see the service times. And this may be your season to come back to church. And there's the service times on there, 8.30, 10, and 11.30. And so we would invite you to come be a part of one of those services. We're also sliding back the, the pipe and drapes that kind of frame our gymnasium auditorium. We're sliding back 
the screens and we'll have additional seating out. The seating will actually wrap around to the side of the stage. And so we'll be able to add capacity for more people to be in the room while still maintaining social distancing. So we still want to go through the same safety protocols. We want you to feel safe. We want to do everything we can during this season. But we want to expand the capacity because I believe Easter is going to be big. Matter of fact, I want to say it like this. I believe Easter is going to be a seismic shift in people returning to church and deepening their passion to encounter God. So if you're at home, write that down. Seismic shift. That's my word for today about Easter. Seismic shift. I believe that on Easter this year, we're going to see people saved and healed and set free like no other time in our church history. I believe it. I'm declaring it in Jesus' name. I believe that with so many people that are now getting their vaccines, the Cases of COVID are dropping. Our governor is easing some of the restrictions. And plus, I just think there's a, a fresh hunger for people to, to you know, experience God and to gather again. And so I think all that's coming together to create a seismic shift. It's going to be epic at our church this Easter. And I want to encourage you. It might be your season to come back to church. It might be your day to, to return uh, I believe there's something going on that you want to be a part of. And if your health is there, uh, if you've had your vaccine, then it's time to come back to church. I look forward to seeing you. So that's going to be Easter coming up. I'm pumped about it. It's going to be great. But before we get to Easter, we have a sermon series that we are launching next week. I'm really pumped about this sermon series. I love the title of it, and I think it's going to be great. Check out this video real quick. How many of you love to watch Shark Week on TV? Uh, I'm fascinated when I watch Shark Week. I, I love to see the stories, and uh, I cannot believe the people that are so crazy to get in the water with sharks, and they swim around, and they get in those cages, and they go down there. Uh, I, I think I might get in a cage and swim with sharks, but um, I don't understand, though, in those cages why they leave that big gap at the top of the cage. I'm like, how dumb is that? Who built those cages? Like the bars ought to be all the way around you. And so, but nonetheless, um, Shark Week, I love to watch it on TV. How many of you watched the movie Jaws, though? Did you see that movie years ago? When I was growing up, Jaws was the, the movie to watch, and it, it scared me. Um, that movie is the reason I'm afraid of the ocean. That's it. I'm still afraid of the ocean, and it's because of that movie. And I would also say the ocean uh, is also known as the shark's kitchen. Yep, that's where they live. So when you're swimming in their kitchen, that's why I'm afraid of it all there. But so listen, this series, though, ties to that. Listen, we live at the beach. Some of you crazy people like Jared love to surf out in the ocean, and you don't care about the sharks. I, I applaud you. You have, you're fearless, and I love that. But So in this series, though, uh, we want to learn how to navigate the shark-infested waters of life uh, the enemy, he is real, but compared to God, he is weak. And that's why it is shark weak. It is W-E-A-K. And so we're going to learn about how weak the enemy is, how to be able to navigate the shark-infested waters of life. And that begins next week, W-E-E-K. So it's going to be great, so tune into that. Awesome. It's going to be just such a fun series. And uh, maybe you want to come back to church and be a part of it here, but online we'll have it. It's going to be great. Um, so listen, in the beginning of the year, as I'm kind of today talking about some vision things and looking back and looking ahead, uh, in January I shared three goals for us as a church, and I want to remind you of those goals and some of the progress that we've made on these goals. 
And so we set these, and the first goal that we set for us as a church was to begin live broadcast of our Sunday services. And so today is Wednesday. I'm recording this on Wednesday, and then we then edit it and we present it on Sunday. So Sunday's not a live broadcast yet, but we're working on it. Now, honestly, I thought we would be there a little quicker, but when we hired Chandler Ritter, he shared with me how difficult it was to do a really quality job and I love Chandler's heart because he does things with excellence. And so he wants us to be careful that we do this exactly right so we can bring the quality to what we're doing. Uh, we're also focused on buying equipment that would be um, suitable so when we move into our new building that we don't have to rebuy a lot of equipment for that experience. And so we're working on it. Uh, I don't know when we're going to get there. I guess and this is my guess because I'm not a tech guy, but I think probably around 90 days we should be there for live broadcast. But it's a goal of ours. We're working on it. That impacts you guys at home. One day you'll be able to just drop in on a service with us. And so we're looking forward to that. The second uh, goal for us as a church is the Bible Project. The Bible Project. We began this in January. The Bible Project is a year-long project to inspire our church to read the entire Bible using the one-year Bible. So I hope you can get a good picture of that online. This Bible is amazing. But in January, we started giving away these Bibles for free. We gave away almost 500 of these Bibles. And so we are encouraging our church, all of us, to read through this one-year Bible together. And in my opinion... This Bible is the best devotional Bible on the market. I don't think you can find a better Bible to read through for your devotions every morning. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to read that day's reading. Every day has a portion of the Old Testament, a portion of the New Testament. It has a portion of uh, Psalms in it, a portion of Proverbs in it, and it's just fantastic. So listen, if you're hearing this for the first time and you don't have your one-year Bible, we will give you your one-year Bible for free. Go online, go to the tab that says Online Church, and then you'll see a link there to be able to request your Bible. We'll send you one for free. We are so committed to people reading the Bible that we'll give it to you for free so that you'll have that as a resource. Now, listen, we've been a few months in, and at this point, like any great habit, I mean, sorry, any great goal, that we start at the beginning of the year like a New Year's resolution. Um, many of us have probably at this point missed several days. Some of us may have stopped reading our Bibles. Uh, some of you got in the middle of Leviticus where we've been for the last month and Oh man, Leviticus, it's, it's not the easiest to read. If you've been reading it, you know it's, it's kind of difficult. But you know, when I read Leviticus, it reminds me that you know, God is so holy that he set up this system, uh, this, the process of, of dealing with sin so that sinful people can be in God's presence. And so it's just all about the sacrifices so that they can deal with their sins, so that they can be close to God. And, um, but when I read it, it makes me so thankful for Jesus Christ because we don't live in the old system, the old covenant, or the Old Testament. We live in the new covenant, in the New Testament, where Jesus has been that sacrifice. And so, you know, I'm thankful for where we are today in our walk with God because of Jesus Christ. So if you've stopped reading your Bible, though, I want to encourage you to just pick up today and start reading today. Don't worry about what you've missed. Just start reading today, and let's do this Bible project together. So if you don't have a Bible, please order your Bible from us. We'll get it to you. It's a year-long project. It's awesome. We will encourage you to be a part of that. And so awesome. The last goal that we have for a church I want to remind you about is we are going to begin construction on the new church building this year. And so that's exciting. It's, it's huge. It's big. It's, it's going to impact our church in so many amazing ways. I'm looking forward to getting in a new facility one day. Uh, so, but we're working on it. So in the past 30 days, here's what has happened. Our, our architect, his name is John Urban of Urban Design, and he is a local architect. He's a godly man, and he is the one that's representing us right now to the city also. And so he presented our plans to the city for the technical review committees. 
And so they reviewed our plans. They made some recommendations. Then he returned the plans after the recommendations, and we made um, some changes. He resubmitted those plans. They've accepted and approved that. And so now he is submitting our plans to the subdivision review board. And so it's another committee that has to go through our city to approve our, uh, our plans. And so it's all in the works. It's all in the process. And so we're moving forward with our building. It's wonderful. I hope sometime in the next 90 days we get this thing to bid. And then sometime in the fall we plan on starting construction. And so that's a little bit of the rough timeline that we're working towards. And we pray we get there. If you haven't seen our building, let me show you a quick video of our building. That, my friends, is what's happening around our church. We have so many things happening. I love my church. I hope you love your church also. And so before I preach a short message to you, I want to just pray for all that's going on. And so I invite you to join me in prayer to pray for our church. And then as soon as I finish praying, we're going to jump into to a message. I believe the Lord has a word for you. Uh, and so I want to get to that. But before we do, let's maybe, would you just maybe lift your hands to the screen? Or if you're holding your screen, maybe just lift it up in some way and just kind of come into agreement with me as I pray for all that's happening in our church. And, and so, Father, we thank you that we as a church body are gathered in person and online. And, and Lord, we, we see your hand moving in so many ways. And there are so many amazing and exciting things happening in our church. And, and we just want to lift up our church to you. We lift our hands to you. We ask for you to continually... Uh, continue to bless our church and we thank you for that. God, we pray now for our Easter services. God, I pray for a seismic shift. I pray, Lord, that you would do something so amazing in Easter services this year. We ask for many people to attend. I pray, God, that many people would return back to in-person church services. God, we pray that many people would be saved. Many people would experience your touch on that day. Father, I pray over our tech team. We pray over Chandler Ritter as he is um, working on our live broadcast. Father, we pray that our church would stay faithful to the Bible project. Father, I pray that you would bless our building project, Father. And so, Lord, we just say in the name of Jesus that project, the building project, that it's done. And we declare that in the name of Jesus. Father, while I'm praying, I pray over my church body that's out there. Father, I pray that you'll protect them from sickness. I pray that you'll provide for them in every way they need. Strengthen their spiritual life, I pray. And now, Lord, I pray that you just anoint this message. Let it encourage us. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, church. Amen, amen. Well, listen, I feel like I've talked a lot. I just need to change directions for us for a moment. I need to, to shift the, the thought patterns from, from kind of some church business because I want to bring us to, to receive something from God's Word today. And I want to take us to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, verse 15. And my sermon title is, Kill the Cows and Burn the Plows. Kill the Cows and Burn the Plows. So in the story of 1 Kings chapter 19, 15, Elisha is anointed by Elijah to become the next prophet for God for the Israelites and for those kings. So Elisha in this story, he destroys what is standing between him and his destiny. And he kills the cows and burns the plows because that is standing between him and his destiny. And so my question to you is, what is standing between you and your destiny? So in 1 Kings chapter 19, 15 through 16, it says this, The Lord said to Elijah, 
He said, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, Elijah the prophet, he says to him, anoint Hazael king of Aram. In other words, appoint him to be the next king of Aram. Also, anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, the king over Israel. In other words, anoint Jehu to be the king of Israel. And then after you have anointed these kings to be their kings, then go anoint Elisha, son of, of Shaphat, to succeed you as a prophet. So Elijah, he was God's current prophet. And in those days and in today's days, there are still prophets. There are prophets that, that God uses to carry his word. The prophet Elijah, he carried the word of the Lord and he carried the authority of God for the Israelites. God also used the prophets to, to set in earthly kings. He used prophets to influence the, the governments and the, the earthly governments of their time. And In other words, God used prophets to, to influence all earthly governments. Sometimes people say to me, as a pastor, and they'll say, hey, I think the church ought to stay out of politics. And, and I understand their heart because politics are messy and they're divisive and, and anything that seems divisive, you think you'd want to stay away from it. But, but when I hear that, I kind of scratch my head because that doesn't represent what the Bible represents. God uses prophets to influence government leaders. And if that's the case... I believe God still uses his pulpits to influence political platforms and address biblical issues that are current in our culture. And so I just think that the church and the pulpits, the pastors, should still speak into with grace and with love and in a way that helps bring unity to the best of our abilities. But we should still speak into the important topics that are impacting our culture. And, and when it comes to government, we ought to be influences in government. We ought to be talking about it. We ought to be an influence there. And I'm just here to tell you that our church will always stand for and speak out for the unborn children. And we will stand for and speak out for the protection of women and racial unity. And we will stand for the best way to support the poor. And, and we will stand for our religious liberties. And we'll be bold as we have to be because I believe these are important things that the Bible addresses. I believe the Bible addresses every area of life. And all through the Bible, God works through his leaders to influence the earthly governments. And I say all that to set up a quick talk for you and I today. Because right now we have a political issue that is pressing on our time. There is a bill that has been presented that has the potential to be significantly um, negatively impacting the important issues we stand for. And it's the Equality Act. The Equality Act. It sounds good, but it is not what it appears to be. I want to read you a letter, a portion of a letter from our congressman, David Rouser. And he writes this about the bill. So the bill was passed through Congress, but it has not been set in as law through the Senate. There's still a vote to be had. And so David Rouser says this about the bill. He said, as you know, H.R. 5, which is the Equality Act, was introduced on February 18th, 2021 by Representative David Ciciline, a Democrat from Rhode Island. This bill makes radical revisions to federal civil rights laws. It undercuts protections for women and guts protections for churches and other religious organizations. He says it redefines sex sexual orientation, and gender identity. Further, the bill exempts the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, the provisions that, that applied to the federal civil rights law, thereby, thereby essentially forcing physicians to perform abortions even if they object because of deeply held religious beliefs. It would also open the door for taxpayer funding of abortions, Provisions in this Equality Act could also be used to penalize faith organizations that require their clergy to adhere to certain moral standards by restricting funding to faith-based charities. So what it's saying is, is they want to 
control what the pastors preach about. And if we preach on things that, that affirm that marriage ought to be between a man and a woman, then they have now the legal basis to bring a lawsuit against churches and potentially restrict their 501c3 status, which would in essence mean that any charitable gift given to a church that has been tagged by this, uh, their designated gift would not be tax deductible. So it's coming against the churches. He writes in his letter that provisions in the bill would prove to be detrimental to women. For example, men who become women would have access to college scholarship opportunities that are specifically for women, and they would compete in women's sports despite the fact that they are much stronger and faster because they are biological males. A natural-born woman will have little chance of competing for first place in anything. This is the reason why we have men's and women's sports, after all. Additionally, he says, men who convert themselves to women would be eligible for assistance from the Small Business Administration's Office of Women's Business Ownership. He says that every person, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity, already has legal protection under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution and the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So that's a lot. It's a significant bill. And I just want to say this in terms of, of position for us as a church, that I believe that every person in America should be treated fairly. And they should have equality of fairness in our laws and equality of fairness in opportunities to succeed in our country. I believe in equality of fairness regardless of race, regardless of religion, sex, sexual orientation, or LBGTQ. I believe it should be fair through the equality of opportunity and safety. I believe our country should be a safe place and a place for every person to succeed in life. But this has already been in place through the, the 1964 Act of the Civil Rights Laws. It's in place. This law that they are, in, that are bringing in today is targeted to diminish the equality of women, unborn children, and religious organizations. And so I say all this to you today to encourage you to look into this bill, pray that this bill does not pass, and also contact our senators and demand that they vote no on the Equality Act. So I share that with you today as just a small portion of my message. And I want to get back to my message for just a few minutes because I want to talk to you about Elijah and Elisha, how he he was able to you know, kill the cows and, and burn the plows. In other words, he, he got rid of anything that held him from his destiny. So back to the story. After God told Elijah to anoint the kings, he said, go anoint Elisha to be his successor as the next prophet. So what happened was in verse 19, it says, Elijah then went from there and he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, and he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. And he himself was driving the twelfth pair. And so Elijah went to him and he, he, he threw his cloak around him. Now Elisha, think about this moment. Elisha, he was plowing. He was doing his normal routine life. He was a hard worker. He was working in a, a large family business. He was successful. He had teams of oxen. They had a staff. Elisha uh, must, though, have been praying about his destiny before Elijah came and threw the cloak on him. He must have known inside his heart that God had something different for him as a part of his destiny. He must have known that because in the moment that, that Elijah threw that cloak on him, he accepted that calling. He was ready for it. He was prepared in his heart for that cloak to come, that anointing to come for him to be a prophet. And so Elisha, he knew God had a, a different call on his life than where he was right then. And so when Elisha, Elijah, so when Elijah out of the blue shows up, he approached him and threw the cloak over him. He was ready for his next calling. And so I was just thinking about this moment and I kind of had a couple thoughts that I just want to interject on this about Elisha. And the first thing just to consider is that Elisha kept his hands on the plow until God brought the new calling to him. 
He, he stayed the, the course. He, he, was, he was continuing to plow. He was, he was just doing the work that God had put in front of him. And I want to encourage you that if you're not where you believe your destiny has taken you and you're not there yet, keep your hands on the plow. Uh, be faithful in your current job. Succeed in your current place. Elisha was succeeding at where he was. And so I want to encourage you to be faithful in the smaller thing until God brings your bigger dream into your life. The Bible says in, in Luke 16, 10, it says if you are faithful in little things, then it qualifies you to be able to be faithful in larger things. And so Elisha, he kept his hands on the plow. The second thing I noticed is that Elisha was going about his normal routine. He was, he was just plowing the fields. He was, he was doing his work. And then out of the blue, Elijah surprised him with this cloak and the anointing. What Elisha didn't know was that sometime earlier, God had spoken to Elijah to go to Elisha and anoint him. And so Elijah began his journey to see him, to anoint him. And so what was happening is, as Elisha was about his normal routine, he had no idea that God was working behind the scenes to bring his destiny to him. He was just being faithful at where he was, and, and, and at God's timing, he brought the anointing to set him up for his next destiny. I think so many times we don't understand what God is doing behind the scenes, and we think that we're just plowing the fields. We think that we're just, we're just holding on to the plow. I mean, for poor Elisha, he was holding on the plow and looking at the back ends of two cows and they were dragging him around. You may think that, that life is just dragging you around and you're like, where is God in all of this? And you're like, why do I just have to do this over and over and over? And while you're doing it, God was working out a plan to anoint him for his next destiny. I love that Elijah, Elisha was faithful to his, his cows, to his plowing. And then God behind the scenes was working. The third thing that I noticed in this story is the cloak. It represented God's anointing for his calling to be a prophet. And I believe in the same way that God anointed Elisha, he's still throwing cloaks today. God has called you. You need to know you have a purpose. You're, you're, you may be in an ordinary routine spot today, but it may be preparation for what God has for you next. You may not be where you want to be right now, but if you'll be faithful there, I believe God will suddenly surprise you as he shifts the circumstances to where you step into a fresh anointing for your calling. And so God is still throwing cloaks today. So after Elijah, he threw the cloak on Elisha. Elisha did something very interesting. In 1 Kings 19, 21, it says, he, Elisha, he took his yoke of oxen and he slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. And then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. So he, he killed his cows and he burned his plows. He burned it. Elisha was making a statement, probably to himself, but to any of us that are listening today, if we choose to see it, we can see that what Elisha was doing is he was making a break from his past routines and he was making a break from his past securities, his past job, so that he could step into all that God had called him to. Elisha, he shows us that to step toward your destiny, you have to step away from your security. You may have to kill some cows and burn some plows too if you want to go where God is leading you in your life. For Elisha, the plow stood between him and his destiny. So Elisha, he torched it. He slaughtered the oxen. He threw a party. He torched the plows. And so I want to ask you, what is standing between you and your destiny today? What habit is holding you back? What routine is standing between you and your destiny? What negative habits or negative thoughts are you having that are holding you back? What desires that are not godly could be holding you back? What, what fear is holding you back? 
What's, what's keeping you from, from stepping forward in what God has for you? What influences in your life are, are between what, where you are and where God wants to take you? What sin is, is being kept tight? What, what, what is holding you back in your life? What, what hurt from your past is, is still nagging at you? What offense? Are you offended at something and you, you've chosen just to hold that offense rather than move forward? Maybe there's an attitude that is standing between you and God. Maybe there's a grudge. Maybe you're just mad. Maybe you're mad at the government. Maybe you're mad at the church. I don't know. What is holding you back? Is it worth it? What relationship? What victim mentality are you holding on to? The standing between you and your destiny. For Elisha, it was actually something good. His business was good, but that wasn't God's destiny for him. So Elisha, he, he killed the cows and he burned the plows so that he couldn't go back to his old patterns of life. He wanted to move forward more than he wanted to hold on to his past. There was no turning back. It reminds me of a, an old familiar youth song that we saying in youth and and um, so you probably remember this song but you know it goes a little like this and so uh, I wish you were here with me to help me sing it because I am not a worship leader but the old song goes like this I have decided to follow Jesus come on you know it no turning back no turning back. That was terrible, but it makes the point that, that when you follow Jesus, the, the, the things of the past that are holding us back are not worth it. So there's no turning back. It was the end of Elisha the farmer and the beginning of Elisha the prophet. So it doesn't matter what you're trying to do, whether you're trying to lose weight or get into graduate school or to write a book or start a business or a ministry or get out of debt, the first step for you is to eliminate the possibility of moving backwards into the things of your past that are holding you back. In order to begin a new chapter, you have to end the old chapter. And Elisha, he didn't have to burn his plowing equipment to follow Elijah, but he, he made a statement, and more specifically, it was a statement of faith that there was no turning back. I think often people fail in life, not because they're trying to live their dream. It's because they settle for plan B in their life. They, they allow those things to stay in their life and they don't burn those plows and they don't move forward. I said, I don't want that to be in your life. Well, let's, let's get rid of anything that's holding us back from our destiny. And so God's word for you today is to kill the cows and burn the plows. Get rid of whatever's standing between you and your destiny. Whatever's standing between you and a great marriage, between you and your calling. Maybe what's between you and your walk with God. Like, none of it's worth it. I don't want you to miss what God has for you in your life because you've allowed something to stand in your way. So I wanted to share this word with you today because I believe God has a great destiny for you. And I, the things that plague us, the things that stand between us, we all have them. I have them. I've got to burn my plows too. I also shared this with you today because I feel like as a church, I don't want anything to stand between us and our destiny. And I feel like kind of the biggest obstacle for us and our destiny right now is just building this new building. And so for that reason, I'm going to continue to cast vision about our, our building and I'm going to spend a lot of time and energy helping us to, to move forward with this building because I don't want anything to stand between us and all that God has for us. But until we get there, church, until we get to this next place, we also want to be like Elisha where he kept his hands on the plow. And so we will keep our hands on the plow. We'll celebrate what God has given us right now. We'll be faithful in this, this smaller venue until God brings us into something bigger. I believe that one day God will shift our circumstances and we'll step into a unique building that God has called us to. So church, I share all that with you today. God bless you. I believe God's got a great plan for your life. And I believe he just wants to help you move forward but you're going to have to burn some plows, get rid of some things that are holding you back, me and you both. Church, I love you. Let me pray for you. Father, thanks for this day. 
God, I ask that um, you would use this message to strengthen us, align our church to vision. God, help us to succeed in our goals. And God, I pray that, that each person listening today, that, that this word would help them to succeed in the dream that you have put in their life, Father. Help us to see the areas that are holding us back. and Help us to, to just to burn those things, to, to burn those plows, to, to change whatever needs to be changed so that we can reach our destinies. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. 